Welcome to Ask the Accountant, the podcast that is made for you. Weekly podcast live Mondays from 8.30 a.m., released on the podcast service of your choice on Wednesdays. Your main weekly hosts, Aaron Patrick and Johan Gary. Got something to ask? Submit your questions below or ask during the show. Podcast loading. We are currently getting everything set up behind the scenes. So sit back, relax, and we will be with you in a few seconds. Enjoy. Good morning, everybody, and a very warm welcome to Ask the Accountant. We've got some technical difficulties this morning. Oh, no, no, no. I think we've gone, I think we've gone live on LinkedIn. So welcome to the LinkedIn people today. Um, my name is Aaron Patrick, and today is episode number 11 of the 9th, is it 19th December? Yeah, it's 19th December, 19th December, 2022. So with me today, as always, is Johan. Johan, how has your weekend been? Good morning, Aaron. My weekend was lovely. Don't get me wrong. It was nice to see the in-laws and to go and see some of my wife's friends for uh, dinner last night. But it wasn't what I was promised uh, up to a few days ago. So, uh, yeah, not the best weekend I was looking forward to, but it was all right. Thank you very much. Um, So, yeah, no, unfortunately, I was due to meet yourself and go to see Peter Kay in the O2 in London. But courtesy of all the train strikes, we were unable to get there for a sensible amount of money. Um, there were offers for flights of £400 each way per person. It's that like, mm, I want to see Peter Kay, but I don't know if I want to see him that much. Were you going to own um, the plane at that sort of price? Or? <laughs> was it yeah, I would hope that you, I have the whole of the first class cabin for that price to get from Edinburgh to the 20 uh, minutes London. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. So yeah, it's uh, it was disappointing, but we had a nice weekend. How was your weekend? Mine not to gloat and rub it in too much. Yeah, we'll skip over um, the fact that PK was very, very, very good. Um, first, a big shout out. I got my certified trainer twenty twenty three. You're not going to be able to see that at all, but yeah, if we can get that in the right place. So certified trainer twenty twenty three. So very, very happy to see that. That to arrive in the post. Um, yeah, so I've had a great weekend, actually. I Friday went down to see Peter Cave, which was good fun. I don't know if you know a, a YouTube channel called Sorted Food. Ring any bells? I if, think I've heard of it, yeah. So a food channel. Um, if you have a chance, everyone, I highly, highly recommend giving them a look, look on YouTube. Really, really good video. In fact, I found it this time last year in my COVID uh, fever dream. Um, <laughs> never looked back since. But we went to see their live Christmas Chingley, basically. Um, got to meet a YouTuber called Max Fosh, another name you might have recognized. Yeah, no, okay. No, worth, worth, worth trying. <laughs> um, so, yeah, spent spent the weekend in London. And then yesterday came back for our annual, uh, well, it's, it, we've been doing it for, for years and years now, where we get to see the Fillers in Derby. So, a bit of a um, tribute band to the Killers. And yeah, I mean, they were at one point booked for our wedding. So yeah, we uh, we really do like to see the fillers. So yeah, absolutely. Just to clarify for the public, the wedding's not cancelled. <laughs> it's COVID, just postponed. Yeah. Yeah. COVID. Yeah. Till till further notice. I mean, <laughs> you know what, all the fans just fl- flushing Aaron with marriage proposals. <laughs> so yeah, so it's been a it's been a, a very very eventful and good weekend. It's just a it's just a shame that. Uh, yeah, we've still got work to work to do for this week, but I'm 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 glad to get it all done. It'll be uh, we've got we've got a busy week ahead of us, but yeah, once it's done, we can sit back and relax for Christmas. Uh, feedback for the show. So remember, if you do have any feedback at all, then please do use the links below, or I'm going to put it in the chat as we speak. Um, and like we've got in comments though at the moment, we've got people already here for the live show itself. So Paul. Uh, great to see you this morning and we got some others as well um we had some feedback actually um i got asked why our intro is so long um and why, why we said that. uh real reason why it's so long is because technically uh, we go live to one two three four five six seven eight different places um and it just gives us a bit of time to make sure that all those we're doing which is a good thing because today linkedin was having a bit of a play around for us so yeah we use that time to 
go in there. So there is your feedback for the show. All right, today we've got some really, really good topics. Uh, we've got a bit of a rant to go on. I'm pretty sure most people will understand what that rant's going to be about. Uh, we've got the um, closure of one scheme. We've got a Scottish tax update from the, you know, from from what? Who else than actually someone from Scotland themselves? Um, and then we've got um, we're going to end um, as the expert 2022 on a QuickBooks related bit of news. So we can uh, we can look forward to that. You know, more feedback that we may have may or may not received about you know what we cover on the show. So we're going to make sure we end on a bit of QuickBooks news at the end. So we'll bring that into into topic. So let's start us off then on the big news of the week. And I think most people are kind of understanding what this news is going to be. But we've got someone who's going to explain it all for us, a bit of a special guest, hopefully a recurring theme this one. I'm hoping this isn't the first time that we uh, we get to uh, let, let this on. But we've got a little bit of a special guest um, from NetTracker, and he's going to explain exactly what's happened in the last couple of days. So just just Give us a, I think it's a, what is it, two minutes long, this one, um, and enjoy this little se segment that we've got for you all. Oh, wrong one. Oh. <laughs> I'm telling you, today is not going well. Right, technically, let's get this. Well, that it's was disappointing, thing. wasn't it? <laughs> oh, you can hear it now? Oh, I have to be in. All right, okay. I'll just be What's quiet. Let's start that again. No sure. oh, Apologies for the technical difficulties, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, hi, hi. Seen the news, accountants don't know what to do. Software providers can keep them a bay, them a bay. Empty, it looks like there will be more delays. Fifth of April, 24. What's gone wrong? No one's sure. Each time I see, well, it seems to me I'm not get up for MTD. Creating a mess, causing distress. So your fix is to leave until 26. To ask a question, make a suggestion, or just rant. Ask the accountant with Aaron Patrick and Johan Gorey every Monday at 8.30. Keep the taxman from your door. No need to worry anymore. Merry Christmas. Ah, Can I absolutely say? Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I feel very much like we're on BBC News right now. But it's <laughs> a live performance, a slight technical glitch, but they still pull it off. <laughs> at one point i meant to say over to the studio um i mean full spoiler alert for me i couldn't hear that one so hopefully you guys were able to hear it so yeah i can <laughs> i'll just go through mine in it uh no but absolutely brilliant they won it very very good there by ash um and we'll make sure to get him on the show at some point um but he's absolutely right isn't it there has been some feedback has come through now 
we have to clarify this is all speculation isn't it so we haven't had an official word from hmrc <clears throat> at this point in time but we can kind of take this as a as a, a real leak can't we i mean this is this is this is happening isn't it um so just to put everyone in the know of exactly what's happened there um the times leaked quote leaked uh the fact that there is a um, going to be the ability, there are going to be a delay to make a tax up in 2024, as we were all expecting, to 2026. Bear in mind that it was 2015, I think it was, that they kind of like half heartedly announced it back in the day. Uh, so, making tax digital is looking like it's going to have that delay. We don't know in what form or anything else because, you know, we've not had the official announcement, but it looks like it's going to be announced very, very shortly. So, I think it's time to have a little bit of a rant about this one, isn't it? Um, Jan, do you want to go first? Do you want to give your initial reactions? Um, and then we can go on to uh, the next part of the rant. Yeah, I mean, timeline-wise, we were hearing rumours of an emergency meeting at HMRC with software providers while we were at Accounting Web Live, um, and we were digging around trying to get some insights. That meeting then got cancelled. I think we were fairly sure off the back of that meeting we were going to see a delay. I think we were expecting a year. So 2025 was the expected announcement. Then nothing happened for about a month. And then John Toon um, went out on LinkedIn and said, I've had this, and he started citing his sources. So he'd been given a heads up by a governing body. He'd also seen a... Um, an update that HMRC put on their website accidentally and took down very quickly, but I've seen screenshots of that update now. Um, and then that evening, the Times ran with it. Um, so the, the Times wouldn't run with this unless they were confident that it was, they've had some decent inside sources confirming it, basically, is my thought. Um, but yeah, it's... It's extremely frustrating that, once again, the proactive accountants out there that have spent time already educating their clients, investing time and resources and money into setting up procedures, policies, processes and systems, investigating what softwares they will and won't be using to satisfy the MTD, its requirements. All of that is... It's not wasted because it's going to be needed in the future. And my understanding is whilst the legislative date will be 2026, from April next year, the beta will still be open to the public to be used. Um, they're not The accountants that have been proactive and been tackling this are not going to see the return on investment they were expecting as quickly as they're expecting it. And then you've got the software providers who have spent millions on solutions for this. You know, you've got <clears throat> you've got your big ones like QuickBooks, Sage, Zero, and yeah, free agent and stuff like that. I mean, I'll go the reason I was hesitating on Zero is ultimately the QuickBooks and the Sages of the world, they can afford to spend millions and wait for a long period of time for the reinvestment to come back. Free agents got RBS money, so they can afford to they're not going to be in trouble if their reinvestment doesn't come back as quickly as planned. Zero, depending on who you speak to, might <laughs> might have been banking on this MTD it's to happen in, in the timeline required because they could do some reinvestment and return on their investments. But then you've got the small players like Coconut, who we looked at last week, Hammock, our favourite landlord solution. We've got providers like that who have launched MTD it's a solutions for this very reason that like they are their entire existence is basically because their MTD ITSA was coming. Exactly. All of their investors have invested in that. All of their investors are expecting a return on investment from 2024 onwards. And to turn around to your investors and say, oh, actually, it's going to be another two years. That's a really painful conversation. I mean, we've already had conversations internally where we're like, well, all that time and resource invested to get ready for MTD it, so we're actually not going to see a return. And we're not talking big money at all, but these companies are. And it's going to potentially challenge quite a lot of them 
and the way that they're going to go forwards and whether they're going to survive until 2026 to deliver their solution. You know, they're going to have to encourage and promote the benefits of being MTD. It's a, on the beta for sole traders. They're going to have to try and encourage people to be proactive and early adopters of it so that they can then deliver this tool and make some return on their investment. Exactly. And it's a hell of a challenge. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it from the software, even just us, like we're a very small proportion of the accounting world, but we know ourselves that we absolutely love the hammocks of the world and there's other software that will promote for certain niches and everything else. But we're struggling to get the adoption for mass adoption for all our clients because there's not that necessary need for it yet. And we need MTD to be the the point there where we can push them on because it'll go from having 20% of our client base to 100% of that niche of the client base overnight if we can get, if we having to force it to 20D. So yeah, it's it's going to hit them hard. And like you said, they, they've been banking on the software provider, been banking on the fact that this MTD is going to force it through. I think for me, the 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 big frustration about this with the movement of the um, goalposts and, and, and everything else is the fact that there hasn't been any tangible uh, like confirmation of it even now. Like we're, we're what? X amount of months until we're in 2023. So that would have been the first year. Then we would have had one year to go. What we need from HMRC at this point is obviously they're wanting to try and find this whole, you know, positive spin on it to, to make it so that they can have a not going to have a PR disaster. I get that. But at the end of the day, they need to come out and, and tell people and, and explain like that there were people on the beta like myself who are still filing quite happily on MTD and, and, and going through. But we need that clarification. And for me, I think this, if they're going to do this and the only way they can make this a positive spin is they finally make some of those big changes that they were rumored to do. So is this the moment where we change what a year end is? You know, do we finally get rid of the 5th of April and move it to the 31st of March or 31st of December? That was a big rumor back in the day about how it's going to go. You know, if we're going to have to have this big two year wait and gap and extra in that, is there any chance that we can actually get something a little worthwhile out of it from the long term in terms of helping us make it more of an adoption? You know, if we're changing the date and we're changing the period and everything else, and suddenly, that is a big change and and you know clients will see that on and people who are filing mtd and filing taxes will actually see that as a a bit of a all oh, stand up let's think about this let's go for this uh, let's understand what it is we need to change and i think that has to be something that we're going to have to see coming through if if we're going to make this work you know maybe it's not the fact that they're going to delay it 100% maybe they are going to bring a tiered approach in that, that could work as well you know certain percentage of forced on MTD to you know, get them into it because as we said many a time on the show like where are these incentives to get people on the MTD so like what 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 would be the reason to be the only reason I'm on it is because you know give update for the show give some content you know talk about it a little bit um but it, they need to bring that incentive and, and and we've said before you know if they gave us a hundred pound off your tax bill or whatever it's going to be to be on the MTD but it's a Suddenly, I can find quite a few clients who are going to jump on that, and actually, we'll take take that on board. Um, but we do need we need something. So, yeah, it's massively frustrating, as you've already said. It's like it's down to the fact that some accountants are, you know, proactively wanting to uh, get this off the ground because we can see where it takes us next. It's not just for MTD; it's so it's those next steps. Like, what can we use this? to push ourselves forward you know how can we improve our services how can we improve clients way of dealing with taxes um, because if you think about what mtd brought it brought that ability for clients and, and people to be more much more real time with their taxes and you know during the beta we've been seeing how how clients will get the opportunity to see what their tax bill is going to be on a quarterly basis and have those updates and and everything that goes with it and all that sort of stuff is just going to push back which is really frustrating so it is what it is, but it, go for it. What I'd, what I'd love to see from HMRC right now is, A, look, this got leaked two days ago. There's been speculation for a month that they've been denying. Then they have an up to update web, website update failure. And I think HMRC just, I mean, we'll, we'll probably get an announcement in June next year to confirm this, because that's about as reactive as HMRC seems to be at the moment with anything. Um, but... If 
they came out today and said, look, yeah, we're delaying until 2026. Fine. But then deliver a communications package to the general public of sole traders for the next two years saying best practice, in our opinion, is digital accounting records. Using digital accountancy software, cloud-based software is best practice. Let's start educating those sole traders now that this is best practice so that actually when it comes to 2024 and they land that first email saying, right, we're insisting you all use digital accountancy software and that it files directly into HMRC, it doesn't come as that huge surprise like it will do if we don't start educating them now. But unfortunately, I don't think HMRC have got any intentions of being that proactive. They're too busy compensating for the £9 billion less revenue that their investigations generated during COVID. They're too busy going around, and and rightly so. Like I think they just announced over £500,000 in penalties in the last quarter for accounting firms that weren't AML registered. Now, yeah. don't get me wrong, that is important, but it's just typical HMRC of being punitive rather than educational. If HMRC were educating people entering the accounting industry properly about their legal responsibilities with AML and MTD and whatever else the topics are, people would be more responding to it. But instead, we wait until the last minute and then we say, oh, and if you don't do this, you're going to get penalised. So, well, let's educate rather than scold and do it in the proper way. And if they're going to delay by two years, they've got two years to educate the general public. Which and, we know isn't going to happen. They're going to push it to yeah. accountants to do, which is yeah. the problem. I mean, in fairness to them and in kind of their defence, then, you know, this is all down to the fact that the IT systems aren't ready. And the reason the IT systems aren't ready was because the, the team were reportedly taken off doing MTD it so and put onto COVID related task masks, weren't they? It was the track and trace and things like that, wasn't it, that they were brought onto. So yeah. yeah okay, and that. I saw a comment on social media that was quite it struck home of so within six weeks we can build a brand new concept of furlough and all the portals required to request furlough. But in how many years is it going to take to to build MTD? And it's like, well yeah, we can see that at times, HMRC can blooming respond quickly. You know, they from the moment furlough was announced to the rollout of the furlough portal was a very short period of time. Was well, so, yeah, but MTD seems to just get pushed back and back every single time. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And it it is one of those things where you know, doesn't matter how much we kind of rave about the benefits of it, it is going to be down to education, isn't it? And like you said, it's going to be the vast majority. And, you know, there is a lot of negativity coming out of it, of people saying, I told you so. Like, I told you it wasn't going to happen. I told you not to worry about it. I told you. You know, we've got to kind of get rid of that because I think we need that set firm date that it's going to be this date. That's when it's going to go live. Again, personally, if you could have the opportunity to change a few things around, fix some problems that we have historically, things like the dates and stuff, and that should give us a better chance. But, yeah, we'll we'll see how it goes. Um, obviously, though, you were saying there about having investment or opportunities to um, get people to um, to invest in getting new software and everything else. That could be a really good incentive. It'd be great if there was a scheme out there to um, to, to help them, maybe help to grow. That could be a good one they could use. Yes, unfortunately. Um, our next topic, is there anything else you want to say on MTD or should we move on? No, but I will be pointing out this delay when I decide I want to delay my tax filing deadline for next year. <laughs> I'll just say to them, well, if you can push your deadlines back, why can't I? Yeah, two years, that sounds like fair to me, doesn't it? Um, yeah, so help to grow scheme, which was um, announced in, well, which which budget was it? Not less budget, budget four, wasn't it? Um, has yeah. been taken off the shelves. So for people who don't know, it was launched in January, and the scheme was intended to ramp up digital skills and technology adoption by offering free advice and discounts up to £5,000 for small businesses. And the idea was basically to give them the opportunity to take software like bookkeeping solutions. I think it was QuickBooks and Sage, was it? Something like that. Yeah, there were the two options. Yeah. Um, 
And the idea then that there was an option to be able to kind of get that for your small businesses. And there were other solutions out there, CRM solutions spring to mind. There were items like that. Um, and the idea was to try and give the opportunity to encourage growth, get the business or get uh, small businesses back off the ground, bring them into that digital section. Um, and this is a, this is again about that education point, isn't it? If, if, if this was publicized in the correct way, if this was educated in the correct way, this could have been a great way to get people onto that MTD bandwagon, get them in the software, get that software talking to other CRM solutions, all that sort of good stuff that we always promote. Um, but unfortunately, the scheme has not gone um, according to plan, to say the very least. Uh, just 1% of its original sign-up target was hit. So because of that, they're looking to close the scheme completely in February 2023. 20, 20, and it's been dubbed a huge waste of taxpayers' money. That doesn't sound like it's a scheme that's been done by the government, does it? I mean, that's uh, that sounds a bit harsh. Um, never heard those phrases being used before. Um but yeah, I mean, it's a shame that the scheme itself in principle was absolutely brilliant. I, I struggled to find any you know solution for our clients. If I'm completely honest, it was they, they didn't seem to get that adoption, not just from the client side, but for, I think from the uh, vendor side as well. I don't think there was quite that vast amount of options there that we could have taken on board. Um, but the scheme itself sounded really, really good. It sounded like a really good way of really pushing things going forward. But unfortunately, wasn't um, wasn't um, uh, you know wasn't taken on board and wasn't um, rolled out quick enough. So it has been killed. Any thoughts? Any issues? Or uh, on this one? Yeah, I think as you say, it had the the ability to be a fantastic little scheme for startup businesses um, to adopt software from day one in a more affordable manner. I mean, they say you could have up to five thousand pounds worth of software. If you look at the list, like QuickBooks and Sage were probably the most expensive products on that list. And that would have saved you 360 quid a year. Like if you go on a 30 quid license, like other softwares on there were like uh, Capsule CRM, which is a great little CRM product, but at 15 pounds a month, it's not breaking the bank. Like you'd have had to work really hard to use your 5,000 pounds allowance. Yeah, but but the, the five thousand was supposed to be towards training as well, wasn't it? That's what yeah. the idea was, wasn't it? But yeah, yeah, you're right. It, that because most of them were only like three month free anyway, weren't they? And then yeah. it was it was those sort of deals, wasn't it? Yeah, it was um, limited in its growth, and you know whether HMRC didn't really go out to software vendors properly, or whether software vendors just didn't see this. They predicted it was going to fail before it even started, and that's why they just didn't get bother wasting their time and resources getting involved i don't know um but you know sage and quickbooks were part of this and i could be wrong if i am wrong please show me the links but i don't think either of them pushed it or promoted the fact that they were part of it or why not get access to our software and training for free of charge for this period of time by going through this scheme um it was a it had the potential to be a great scheme, but as per usual, we've delivered it through civil servants and non-entrepreneurial minds, and it's failed completely. I mean, less than 1% uptake is phenomenally poor. Like, yeah, if you if you ran even in a big company, if you ran a, a project in a business, that had less than one percent uptake, jobs would start being in question. Yeah. Whereas in you know in HMRC, it's like oh that's fine, we'll just put that to the not so good pile. Never we'll ignore that money we've spent there. Let's move that team onto the next project that won't succeed. Um, so yeah, it I think it sums up the government and HMRC's approach entirely at the moment of. Not really much effort goes into anything. Even reconciling payments seems to be a challenge for HMRC at the moment. The amount of times we have to chase them to actually acknowledge my client did pay their VAT or pay YE on time and their automated debt collection service needs to be turned off while they catch up on their bank reconciling. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's an ongoing headache. Yeah, so I've got some stats about the scheme itself. Um, out of all of the 
accounting solutions that was there. So from this, I can see Crunch as well as Sage and, and QuickBox. There was 84 redemptions. 84. Um, which is more than how many people are on the beta if it's uh, for MTD. It's, uh, so that's got to be a plus. I mean... Well, yeah. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, yeah. yeah. I mean, w w you know, we've already said it, but this would have been the perfect way of incentivizing people to get onto MTD. Let's, you know, so given that, that, that this could have been that that financial you know a benefit financial incentive to get them on like let's give them the software free for a year or whatever the whatever the scheme gave them whatever it was um, yeah. but unfortunately no completely missed the mark um and it is down to to that you know just people remembering it i remember it being announced i remember going on the website i remember having a look have i heard about anything have i been incentivized to go back again to see if the list for all i know they have added many more to the schemes since then um but unfortunately yeah it's been there uh, it's been a bit of a difficult one isn't it um and there was also the help to grow was it i can't remember what the other one was called was it management the, the other skills one as well and i don't okay. i don't think we've been told about that yet but i guess that's gonna follow the same same route yeah i'd assume so so very, very, very frustrating. Very frustrating. But yeah, that what can we do? That is, um, if if that if the update's that low, you can understand why it's not been uh, not been pushed forward. Um, okay, so we've got a few comments just to talk about as well. Let's just make sure we're making sure people are are involved. Um, Paul explaining there was no sound, so thank you for that one. Um, Tom Lynch Picker, hello, good morning to you too. Um, going back to MTD, uh, Paul says, I only hope that they really start driving MTD to the public and open the beta to more business types. My hope is HMRC will also start talking directly to accounts who are early adopted. Again, we need incentives, don't we, to give to our clients. Like, that's what we need. Yeah. I mean, I can pretty much guarantee HMRC are not going to talk to the general public about MTD. Like, the closest we're going to get is them turning up to our conferences and not being able to answer any of our questions. And then they'll go home again. And then they'll blame us and the softwares for not being ready for MTD. So when it does finally happen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it unfortunately, it is going to be down to, if we want to communicate with HMRC about MTD, it's a, we need to proactively be working closely with our software providers who have the direct channel. And even the software providers, like I was getting calls last week just before the Times article went out, saying, what have you heard? And those calls were coming from the software providers. HMRC have not brought them up to date or given them any insight on this whatsoever, uh, from what I can understand, because their teams are reaching out to people like myself saying, have you heard anything? You normally hear things. What have you heard? And it's like, yeah, no, this, this isn't good enough, HMRC. Yeah, they're going to need to find a way. I mean, you know, Thinking outside the box here, why don't they give them some sort of R and D benefit for providing MTD? It's a solution. I don't know. You know, that they've got to find a way to to you know repay them at some point, haven't they? Because without the vendors, we won't have MTD. So there's got to be a way of. Uh, well, there's got to be somehow that we can fix and and give something back to them. Um, Paul also says, what is best practice? Oh, that to me won't stop those that don't understand or don't care and rely on us to fix their mess. I'm talking more about the fact that, you know, MTD, it's a, was an opportunity for us as, you know, accountants to push forward, you know, having real time information and having all this wonderful, you know, the dream, the utopia that we can log into everyone's QuickBooks or whatever solution they're using and have an update information and help them. But yeah, it's all going to be based, excuse me, going to be based on, um, on you know clients changing their their habits but i do feel like this is the this mtd was our opportunity if we can't do it for mtd i don't think we ever will be able to achieve it so you know the fact there's been delay just delays our chance to push that even forward and yeah couldn't agree anymore hmrc just do not know their audience currently exactly right anything else on mtd or um the scheme that got canned from your end? Not that I can say properly on public, in a public domain, uh, without being sued or being done for something. But yeah, I mean, it's just, it's HMRC all over at the moment. They're an absolute disgrace of an organisation at this moment in time, in my humble opinion. 
And if anyone runs their business in the same style HMRC would, they'd be bankrupt within weeks. <laughs> exactly. So it's ridiculous. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what the conference um, of 2023 is going to look like, the accounting conference scene, because I think a lot of people were uh, hoping for MTD, con- well, they were kind of relying on MTD content to uh, to fill some of those um, speaking slots and stuff. But maybe it's time we can start talking about something else for, for a little bit. You know, let's uh, <laughs> well, MTD. talk about if it's not MTD. <laughs> right, Council 2023 seat conference season. <laughs> Um, but actually, what speaking of conferences, tickets are now on sale for QuickBooks. Is QuickBooks yeah. Connect in March? Get yourself the early bird discount if you can get it before yeah. the 31st of uh, December. Um, half price, I think it is pretty much. Round about that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, th- uh, I think it's the deadline for the early bird tickets is the 31st of January. Oh, is it January? It, I think it's 25, 30% off. Take yeah. the early bird ticket compared to the last minute tickets. Highly recommend getting yourself involved because it'll be the first one of the year, won't it? So that'll be good to. It's always the first of the year. I I think it's a really good opening salvo for the, any accounting conference season. Is the QuickBooks Connect in person event? Like they've all been online recently, and that's great. It gets the information across, but you don't have the networking and the atmosphere and the overall enjoyment of it, shall we say? So the fact that that's back in person is fantastic news yeah definitely and um if it's anything like the american uh quickbooks connect that was just done over the last couple of weeks we're in for some great um announcements we we may or may not know a couple of them as well but yeah i uh, highly recommend um getting involved because there will be some great um announcements to be or product announcements to come um and also um with that as well we'll be covering all of the announcements from america's quickbooks connect on quickbooks labs which we're expecting to hopefully be second week in january on the wednesday but we'll uh, we'll keep an eye on socials we'll we'll make sure you know definitely wonderful all right i'm going to hand this next topic over to you because apparently scotland had a bit of a tax update so you know it's not hard enough for you at this moment in time having to keep on top of all the um all the updates that have happened in the rest of uh, the UK, but in this Scotland has to have their own little uh, uh, party as well. So, do you want to explain to people what was announced and uh, how it's going to affect clients going forward? Yeah. So, um, yeah, if you think you've got problems, Aaron, <laughs> working in or around Scotland at the moment, so we've got to deal with HMRC and then we've got to deal with the Scottish government doing their own little thing as well. So, um, in Scotland, income tax is devolved, so Scotland can. T- in- change their tax rates appropriately to suit their needs. Um, Historically, the Scottish government, in the form of an SNP government, have always favoured, tried to reduce tax for the lower income and increase tax for the higher incomes to justify that and just be able to generate a bit more revenue for them to spend. Um, So what got announced uh, last week was the Scottish budget, which always follows a few weeks after the English or the UK budget, should I say, from Westminster, because then at that point, Scotland knows what they're, what they're getting each year from Westminster and they can work from there. Um, so Scotland's announcements were four key ones, really. One is they're slashing the uh, tax threshold for higher incomes from 150 so £125,140 in line with the rest of the UK, which got announced in the autumn budget there. Um, but what they're then doing is putting their tax rate for higher incomes up by a penny on each bracket. So what was 41p tax, which was already 1p above the rest of the UK, is now 42p. And what was 46p, which was 1p above the rest of the UK, is now 47p. Um, so the Scottish government's justification for this is that's going to generate an extra billion pounds in revenues, which they're then going to be able to give directly to the NHS in Scotland, because the NHS in Scotland is, again, a devolved matter. Um, now, what I've been asking around for is, is that before or after all the wealthy people move south of the border by 10 miles so they can get the lower tax rates? But, um, yeah, like, there's some tables floating around social media. Um, basically, I think as soon as you go over, I think is it sixty thousand off the top of my head? I can be—I've not got it in front of me. I could be wrong here. 
um, we will see a significant build-up of the difference between a, a UK taxpayer and a Scottish one. Uh, from It starts about a £2,000 a year difference, which isn't a small amount of money, up to like, if you earn £500,000 a year in Scotland, you're going to be best part of £18,000 worse off than you would be in England. Now, to me, that justifies moving across the border, if I was that person, um, which, regardless of whether you see that as tax evasion or the wealthy trying to keep their money, whatever it is, there is a risk there of moving the brightest of the Scottish population out of Scotland, which has a long-term damaging impact on the economy. Um, and then the Scottish Parliament have also increased the tax that you pay in Scotland on buying new homes. So if you've got one house, that's fine. But if you buy multiple properties, at the moment, you pay an extra 4% uh, as tax. So if I buy a property that I'm going to rent out for £100,000, I need to give the government £4,000 for the privilege of wanting to be a landlord. Um as of April, that's going to go up to 6%. So if I buy a property for 100000 I now I need to cover all my legal fees and stuff, but I also then need to give the government £6,000 for the privilege, um, which kind of goes with all the other damaging things they've been doing to the landlord industry in Scotland. So um, in Scotland, the councils have the power to decide whether they want to licence Airbnb and short-term lets. So if you are in Edinburgh, for example, or Glasgow, you have to apply for a license to have a to be on Airbnb. And if they spot you on Airbnb without that license, they will penalise you and come for you very quickly. Um, they've also brought in things like back in September, they banned rent increases for six months, um, yet mortgage rates are going through the roof. So landlords are really starting to struggle. Um, so regardless of where you sit on the political spectrum, ultimately landlords are going to start seeing a financial pinch because of these policies. And they're going to be questioning whether Scotland is the right place to spend that hundred thousand pounds on property or whether they're going to go south of the border and rent uh, buy properties to rent out there. Um, again, it has a challenge. It has its own impacts on economy, local economy and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, they're the main main announcements from the policy was increase of 1p on the 41p and the 42, uh, 46, 46p tax brackets, bringing the tax threshold, income threshold down to 125,000 in line with the UK announcement in the autumn budget. There was a lot of speculation that was going to go to 100,000, um, but they matched the UK budget. Um, but what was very interesting is if you remember back to when Rishi was the Chancellor and the media seemed to know everything about the budget before anyone else did. And the Speaker of the UK government went, oh, I don't like this. You're a naughty person for leaking it. They went a bit further this year in Scotland. They suspended Parliament for an hour while the Speaker investigated how the BBC had been given full access to the budget, basically before they got told in the parliament. Uh, so parliamentary rules are you should make your announcement of the budget to the parliament and then to the media. Um, but yeah, the BBC had all details and were publicising it before this session even started, never mind before the suspension of the session. So they were not happy. Um, but yeah, so that's the announcement uh, for Scottish tax. Um, and based on a comment from a LinkedIn user, who's uh, really surprised to hear how bad HMRC is. The revenue in Ireland are on the ball and are excellent to deal with. I might go to Ireland. <laughs> yeah. Between Scottish tax rates and constant messing around there, all the different rules and HMRC being useless, I might just go to Ireland. That sounds lovely. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, what, what shocks me is timing of all this as well. I, I, ga I gather that they obviously want to fill in some sort of tax hole that, that they've got, which is a, a growing issue that's happening in south of the border as well. Um, but like, I thought the whole conversation at the moment is trying to be, let's get independence, let's try and figure out if that can be pushed and everything else. Surely this sort of 
hiking of tax rate is just going to go against all that because surely the writing's on the wall of what would happen if independence was achieved. It's it you can see now what's going to happen. So, I mean, timing wise, surely that's uh, it, it was a so bad time to start saying all this. It's hard to discuss this without getting political, mm. but when you look at the demographics of who voted yes, who voted no for independence, the wealthier voted no. So there is a bit of a thought of, well, if Scotland's putting the tax rates up and encouraging people with money to move south, it helps get the independence vote across the line because the no voters are moving south. Um, but yeah, it, it concerns me about how stable an economy an independent Scotland could have. Um, thankfully, they don't have any say on in, on um, corporation tax or anything like that at the moment. But it would be interesting if they did, just to see how they used it and what they would and wouldn't do with it before going independent. So, yeah, yeah it's it's interesting times in Scotland. Definitely, one hundred percent. Yeah, at least you got the weather though. I mean, that's that's the thing. You may have high tax rates, we got lovely weather. So, oh no, wait, sorry, that's... no. <laughs> Cold, wet, and icy. <laughs> oh no, no. Oh well. Okay, so yeah, doom and gloom by the sounds of it. I don't think there was any positive spin we can put on that one, is there? I mean, literally, it is just bad news. That's uh, that's the way yeah, the high earn it. It certainly is, and your landlords. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, it's all right though because you can still get your free prescriptions, free university places. Um, because that's what this is all paying for. So, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So there is a bit of a positive spin, maybe. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll end with that. Um, okay, cool. Um, and to end 2022's show, uh, ask the accountant. So, also just a big thank you for everyone who has supported the show this year. We've got some big plans for 2023, so we're looking forward to uh, pushing on with them. But we we took some feedback on board, and we want to make sure that we uh, end on a QuickBooks related news article so this one's just a bit of fun really um i've got i mean my face is gonna be shown we'll, we'll we'll play the clip i think it's only a minute and a bit long so and then we'll have a discussion on there but again i won't be able to hear the clip so yeah hopefully you guys can uh, <laughs> can hear it when we go forward um but yeah let me just explain or play the clip and then we'll talk about it in a minute but at least we've got some quickbooks news to finish on Brilliant. And it's buffering. Buffering. It's buffering. <laughs> oh, thank you, technology. Thank you very much. How's your Monday going, Aaron? I know, right? Oh, there we're coming through. No, can't hear it. Mr. Ray, you have compared as I uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Ray, for being here for the work that you're doing. Mr. Ray, you have compared FTX as worse than Enron. Can you please elaborate on some of the specific ways FTX is worse than one of the largest corporate frauds in history? The, the FTX group is unusual in the sense that, you know, I've done probably a, a dozen large, you know, scale bankruptcies over my career, including Enron, of course. Uh, Every one of those entities had some financial problem or another. Uh, they have some characteristics that are in common. Uh, this one is unusual, and it's unusual in the sense that literally, you know, there's no record keeping whatsoever. It's in the absence of record keeping. Employees would communicate, you know, invoicing and expenses on on Slack, which is you know essentially a, a you know a way of communicating for chat rooms. Uh, they use QuickBooks. Multi-billion dollar company using QuickBooks. QuickBooks? QuickBooks. Uh, nothing against QuickBooks. Very nice tool. Just not for a multi-billion dollar company. Uh, there's no independent board, right? We, we had one person really controlling this. Uh, no independent board. That's highly unusual on a size company this is. And it's made all more complex because we're not dealing with, you know, widgets or you know, or something that's tangible. We're dealing with, with, with crypto. And, and the techno technological issues are made worse when you're dealing with an asset uh, such as crypto. 
So to give some context to that one, brilliant, isn't it? Absolutely brilliant. Uh, to give some context of that, so uh, really quickly, FTX, who you probably have heard in the news, have had a, a few financial difficulties of late um, and have had a few struggles to contend with. Um, were in court basically going through some of the issues and problems and, and everything else. And it turns out they were using QuickBooks to uh, do all of their financial elements, uh, to, to, to run their business, basically. Now, we haven't got confirmed reports yet, but we're hoping it was at least QuickBooks Advance. Um, and, <laughs> and they were pushing QuickBooks Advance go forward. Um, but yeah, I mean, it seems like a bit of a mess, doesn't it? We love QuickBooks. We know... The QuickBooks is definitely the software for our clientele. Um, and we know we can scale it from the smallest to smallest client that we can deal with all the way to the biggest client that potentially we can we can deal with as accountants. But yeah, it's uh, not quite the software that um, that you'd be expecting a multi-million pound business to be using, is it, Yeah. I mean, I would argue you're putting the QuickBooks multi-currency tool to, to the test <laughs> trying to run a cryptocurrency business through it. Um, it does QuickBooks' multi currency tool even handle crypto? Not it sure has it does. Bitcoin and Bitcoin only. So, okay. Um, so they've got that. Okay, so not a complete disaster. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it just shows, doesn't it? This is what goes wrong when you make your own deci uninformed decisions as a business owner and not consulting people that know products inside out because no accountant would have ever recommended that that business of that size uses QuickBooks. So, because it's just not fit for purpose. A multi-billion pound business with multiple foreign uh, cryptocurrency currencies being brought and shared and transferred. And no, <laughs> just, <laughs> I'm not sure what the bright platform would be, but it's not QuickBooks. Yeah. Um, and I suppose this is the PR nightmare that QuickBooks face on a daily basis is, companies using their tool which it's not designed for you know like limited companies trying to use the quickbooks self-employed thing because it's a one-man limited company it's like yes but it's not fit for that purpose um so yeah poor old quickbooks but he's got them in the news yeah exactly and nothing against quickbooks that's what he said yeah. nothing against quickbooks oh, he was all right tool right place right time ftx was not the right place no, not at all. Uh, I loved looking at some of the um, some of the comments on that thread, and it was it was like using Windows Movie Maker to edit Hollywood productions, um, and also saying shooting an Avengers film on an iPhone three. That's kind of equivalent of what they're putting no. there as a, as, uh, as, a, option, as a comparison. So yeah, it's uh, it's a funny little story, I think, to uh, to end it all on. At the end of the day, you know. QuickBooks Advance has got has got some great enhancements coming. Um, we'll see if it can ever get to the point of uh, a multi billion dollar, billion dollar company, but we'll see. We 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 live in hope for that one, don't we? And there we have it. Yeah, look at the timing. We do have a couple of questions coming in. Remember to use the question box to um, put some questions in uh, if you do have anything, and we'll make sure we clear them. We did have a really good question coming through. I won't say the name of the person, but it says um, uh, a really in-depth question about I have an LCC business set up, um, how they're looking to deliver uh, delivery income on all businesses. I went into a lot of detail for us. Just um, just a bit of a bit of a PSA, really, public service announcement. We're a UK accountant, so when it comes to American tax issues, unfortunately, we're not the place for you on that one. So, yeah, really appreciate you sending the question in. Thank you very much. Um, but, yeah, we're not the people to be asking that one for. But, yeah, there are some really good um, US-based accountants uh, podcasts out there. So we'd recommend going to push them on there. Awesome. So, Johan, do you want to give a bit of a shout out what you got planned for the next couple of weeks? Oh, we should actually mention we are not going to be live um, this time next week, unfortunately. Apparently something else on, I can't quite figure out what, what it is. Um, I mean, some of us are willing to do a live broadcast on Boxing Day. <laughs> Others are not. <laughs> we'll let, we'll let the, the community decide who was the willing and who wasn't. Um, and I don't think we can also make it for uh, New Year's Day. Will it be New Year's Day or was it day after New Year's Day? I can't remember what, what the day is going to be. Oh, but oh, I yeah. can't remember. 
but we'll uh, we'll we'll give you all a break as well on that day, and we'll be back in the new year for that second week of January for that Monday morning, and we make sure the podcast goes out on the Wednesday as normal. So yeah, big twenty twenty three. We've got some real big plans for not only Aston Accountant but Aston Accountant. We have cool friends. So yeah, again, thank you for all the support over the year. And we'll be making sure we bring some great content coming your way. So, Johan, what have you got to share with us for the next couple of weeks? And anything people should be looking forward to? Uh, no, we are winding things down, ready for Christmas and New Year. Um, <clears throat> I'm working up till Christmas, um, but working from home, flexi hours, as it were. Um, and then Christmas to New Year, again, flexi hours. And then back at it, recharged after the New Year, really. Um, lots of the team um are taking bits of time off here there and everywhere um around their family and their events and stuff so yeah we're just having a bit of a quieter couple of weeks before we hit tax season ready to go um and yeah the crazy craziness that january brings so i always encourage the team to rest and relax because it doesn't matter how good we are at getting tax returns turned around there's always clients that are going to be a bit last minute. And, or even if they don't want to be, life gets in the way. Someone's been ill. Something's happened in the business. Things happen. That's fine. We can live with it. We're here to support. Um, but it does make January a very busy few weeks for us. It's what about yourself, Aaron? What are you doing for the next couple of weeks? It is the same, similar sort of idea. We've got a really busy week this week, um, trying to get everything all ducks in line, ready for the Christmas break, having a nice break, and then, yeah, getting ourselves ready for, for January. Like you said, it's not necessarily our current clients. It could be, you know, potential clients are going to come through the woodwork who have got big problems that we want to help them out with. So, yeah, January is always, 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 always a very interesting time. So, yeah. It'll be interesting to uh, to go from there. Um, but yeah, we're looking forward to it. Got a few um, a few uh, uh, videos and everything all lined up on the channel. So I was hoping to have no video editing to do over the Christmas period, but then I accidentally released two videos on one day. So that whole idea of uh, <laughs> getting everything all in the pipeline and making sure YouTube algorithm was going to help me was uh, all out the window. So yeah, back to the drawing board, I think, on that one um and going forward from there so yeah so again a real big thank you to everyone for the support in 2022 we've uh we've fully enjoyed it we are and it's been a, it's been a great little ex experiment it's been a fantastic experience absolutely loved every minute of it it's uh it's made monday mornings getting worth worth getting up for for us um we know 8 30 a.m is not right for everyone for the live uh session However, it works for us, so it won't be changing in the foreseeable future. Um, but we get loads of really positive feedback about the show, especially from the podcasts and stuff. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much to everyone that continues to listen. Uh, make sure you leave us a review and you score us out of five on your podcast channels. Uh, that would be the best Christmas present Aaron and I could ask for. <laughs> it certainly would be. And, uh, you know, thank you as well for um, for the Ask, the Ask the Accountant. We have cool friends pilot episode as well. I think I think we couldn't have asked for a better guest. And we've had some really good feedback there as well, yeah. haven't we? Um, yeah. With our first sponsor as well. So Client Engager, we love that. Um, Paul, have a great Christmas and a new year for you as well. Paul, thank you very much. And the legend himself, Ash, thank you again for that video um, and, and letting us giving us permission to play that video. Um, absolutely brilliant really really doing if you haven't please make sure you check out net tracker on there it was a little sponsored segment we'll call it going forward but yeah uh, uh, ash we're not going to deny or accept if that's correct or not but yes one of us wasn't willing um and that's it that is 2022 done and dusted for ask the accountant hope everyone out there has a wonderful christmas and a fantastic new year we're very excited for 2023 as i've already said and you know we'll uh, we'll make sure and ensure that we come back with a bang in January. So it's a goodbye for me. And it's a goodbye for me. Have a great Christmas, everyone. Great New Year. As I try and find the outro. Bye. Bye bye.